And Charlie, tonight they go face a team in Columbus at a, a Ohio State and a team that they've they've beaten, and that's coming off of a home loss right now. Yeah, I mean, again, this is a dire must win situation. You're hoping that you know the guys understand this, and I mean, this this can I mean to me this can make or break the remainder of your games because you need it. And and again, when confidence is not high. As, as it happens throughout the season, you know, it, it kind of dips. Who knows why? When you lose, it doesn't help. Um, now it's like every man on deck. Every, everybody needs to step up and, and do everything they can do, whether it's one minute, whether it's 20 minutes, uh, to contribute and to create advantages for them to win tonight. And, Don, uh, the Hoosiers have been shorthanded, of course. Rob Finnessy has been gone for a, a bit with the plantar fasciitis and not expected to come back anytime soon. Christian Lander dinged up the uh, backup point guard. Uh, and not, you know, they didn't have him the other day and, and not sure what his uh, availability is going to be. So that's going to change how Indiana's offense attacks Ohio State. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, and let's face it, the, the point guard position has been shorthanded since Fennessey's injury, um, and and they've struggled because of it. And that's not to say that Rob Fennessey is the answer to their prayers in the sense of uh, what he's capable of doing, but he makes such a difference, in my opinion, at the defensive end of the floor, and he gives Indiana some stability when he comes out there as the point guard offensively. Uh, because he doesn't, uh, Xavier Johnson, as everyone knows, very, very tough, uh, very athletic, uh, very, very, one of those guys that can do a lot of different things for you. But at times he struggles with his decision making. And sometimes he sh continues to shoot when he's struggling to shoot the basketball as he did against Wisconsin. And that doesn't uh, prove out to be a good thing either. But if you could have, you know, fantasy available, it kind of takes some of that pressure off of Xavier. So, there are so many issues in that regard without having fantasy right now. I think it really hurts this basketball team. But at the same time, somebody else has to step up, whether that's Trey Galloway, Anthony Leo, who knows uh, at this juncture. Tamar Bates, I mean, somebody's got to step up and fill the void. And that's what this and team right now has to find a way to get done. Yeah, Charlie, tonight they go to uh, Columbus to play Ohio State, a team that they have beaten. So they, they know that they they can play with them. Um, and they're coming off of that loss, like I said. So uh, this should give Indiana some impetus uh, of confidence going into to Columbus that they not only can play with them, but they've beaten them already and that they've lost their last game there. Winning a game uh, against an Ohio State team that is ranked and on the road would be uh, medicine for Indiana like you couldn't believe for their postseason hopes. And what, but what is it going to take for Indiana to get that job done tonight? Follow the game plan. I mean, I think it's that simple. Execution, follow the game plan. And now this is one of those experiences, what they call experiential experiences, where you need to learn how to win. And the only way you learn how to win is actually stick to what the game plan calls for. I mean, understanding every possession matters. Um, everyone plays their heart out. You know, you do what you do best. You delegate the rest. That, to me, from a player standpoint, is what they have to do. You know, and then afterwards, that checklist. Okay, did we box out? Did we do the small things that really will show, not show up necessarily on the scorebook? But um, it actually made a difference in the game, and we came home with a victory. And Don, uh, on the road now, this team has, has struggled. Playing in the Big Ten on the road is as tough as it is anyway, period. But this team obviously has not had a great time on the road either. But this is an opportunity playing a team that they have beaten already and that is coming off of a loss. Um, I don't know if that's good or bad for Indiana uh, as far as Ohio State psyche or not. But they have to just approach it, the fact that they have beaten this team and that they need this game and they're capable of beating them. Um, even with the the shorthandedness, that's they've got to stay out of foul trouble, obviously. But they have the the ability to beat this team. Hopefully, they have the confidence to do that. Well, they should have the confidence to do it. They, they beat them uh, sixty seven to fifty one in the first meeting back in January. I think it was January sixth, believe it or not. And uh, without question, uh, they dominated Michigan or Ohio State in this ball game. And and I I believe that they have that confidence level to get this job done. But 
this team was also looked fragile at the end of ball games at times, not being able to find a way to get it done as they did against Wisconsin, who they also had on the ropes the first time they had them. So, uh, again, this is an Indiana basketball team right now that's dealing with confidence and mentality uh, and all those factors that are involved in, in being a tough basketball team. And at the end of the season, and here's the problem that Indiana has right now. They are struggling very much like they did at the end of last year. And that feeling for the older guys in this team or the guys that have been around for a long time, that has to be felt by these guys. And they've got to find some way to break out of that syndrome. And right now, with a four-game losing skid, it's not going to be easy when you're playing away from your own home court and you're playing a team of this caliber. So, this is a this is a really important game for this team. Whether they win it or lose it, uh, it it's really going to be more involved in how they play this ball game, in my opinion. And can they come out of it even with a loss with some confidence? Because this team right now is struggling with that area more than any other. Absolutely, and tonight they can show that uh, this is something that they can show the, the committee, which you hate to think about that kind of stuff, but let's be honest, in this day and age, uh, I test matters, and a team like Indiana that's on the bubble, so to speak, last four in on a lot of prognostications, um, they need to show something, and this would do exactly that. It would kind of put them off of the radar if they could pull this win off. Uh, you'd kind of forget about the fact that, uh, Indiana is, is on the bubble because this would be another decent, good win for them, um, especially going down the stretch. And if they can then just take care of business with uh, the games they have left, they would be fine, I think. But this would really put them over the top. Uh, that's what makes it so important to me. It's It, it would put them in a position of, of not being on the bubble. Don. Right. There's no question. I mean, this, this is a critical ball game tonight. And because they do have a stretch here, they literally could win out. I mean, if they would win this ball game tonight, they could possibly win out. Now, granted, they're going to play Purdue at the end, and they got a Rutgers team that's really tough too. Prior to the Purdue ball game, but the other two ball games, Minnesota and Maryland, they've already beaten those two ball clubs. They've beaten Ohio State, so you can go into this last stretch with a lot of confidence if you could come away with a win here in this matchup tonight and break the scenario of this losing skid that they currently have. Right now, I, I just think this game is so important in that vein as much as anything. Charlie, at the end of the season, a team uh, catching fire. We, we've seen it happen, how important that is. What does this team need to do to catch that fire starting tonight at Ohio State? Uh, Dylan brought up a great point, and it's, it's actually overcoming that pattern that those players in their locker room, Don, and I know you know that they probably have shared with other players, man. Okay, here we go again. You know, we I, this happened last year. This happened, you know, this this time. That that's that's a real conversation. But now here we go again. It needs to be, what are we going to do about it? Right. We need to pay attention. We we need to now execute. We 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 have a better team. We've we've proven ourselves on the road. We play teams. We beat them convincingly. We need to go into that game with that type of confidence, not a false confidence all hyped up, just playing every possession, taking care of business. I think the other thing about this game, too, I, I think Indiana matches up really well with Ohio State. I really do. I I, I hate that Tennessee's not available because I think he could take uh, some of the pressure off of dealing with Branham out there because I think th this freshman for Ohio State right now is playing as good uh, as a lot of uh, players in this league who are – taken over ball games. The Ivy kid, obviously, at Purdue, uh, Johnny Davis for Wisconsin. Uh, this kid's playing kind of like that right now. He had 22 points against Iowa the other night. Uh, so there's no question he's a, a talented guy. But I, but really, I think this team matches up. Uh, Indiana matches up very well against this Ohio State ball club. And if Indiana plays like they did in the first matchup of this team, I think they're going to win this ball game. And I think they're going to – I'm not saying they're going to win it going away because it's never easy, especially with a, a ball club as talented as uh, and as well coached as Ohio State is. But I, I just think this is such a, a pivotal game for this Indiana basketball team. And I think it, it could change the whole complexion of this season with a win in this matchup tonight. 
Yeah, and the key in the, the previously in the previous matchup, they were able to hold EJ Liddell to three of twelve shooting. He was one of five behind the yep. three point line. Uh, they did a great job on him. He only had eleven points in thirty two minutes. He played uh, almost the more minutes than anyone, but they held him to eleven points. Did a tremendous job on him. Indiana outshot Ohio State. Uh, they get, did a good job with turnovers in that previous game with, with only nine. Uh, so they 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 played the kind of basketball that that boy, if they'd have done the rest of the year, we probably wouldn't be having uh, we, our conversation would be different right now. But Ohio State is a team that I agree with you. They match up very well. They they basically shut uh, EJ Liddell down. Um, the most points that they had from any starter in that game was thirteen. So right. Indiana did a great job defensively. That's where they have to come back and do again, keep the defensive pressure on Ohio State tonight. Well, that's the other thing, too. I, I, I mean, this team has made, uh, when they played their best basketball this year, they have played really well at the defensive end of the floor. And that's what they're going to have. That's where the energy has to come from tonight. That defensive effort has got to be there if this team's to have a, a chance to beat Ohio State. Because let's face it, the offense has been spotty all year. I mean, when, when they played some of their best basketball at the defensive end, they have had to play good defense just to win. And and I think that'll be the case in this matchup as well. I think defense will be the critical factor if Indiana is able to keep Ohio State under control and then score the points that they normally score. They'll win this basketball game, but they've got to play the defensive end of the floor more more important than even the offensive side because they can win if they just play defense. 